Junkyard Junkie back here with another video. Today we're going to be working on the infamous Fuse 27. Now Ford put out a TSV on this. I'll throw that up on the screen now. And they actually made a relocation kit. They should have done this in the first place and you'll see why later in the video. But today I'm going to walk you through the entire process. It shouldn't take you no longer than 20 minutes. It's pretty easy to do and it's better to do it before it leaves you stranded. As a side note, I will say that, you know, these can last the lifetime of the vehicle, but it's just better to go ahead and change it now than get stuck later down the road. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so what you want to do first is go ahead and remove the positive battery terminal. So go ahead and wiggle it off just like that and don't let it touch any bare metal. Okay, so coming in here, if we look up here, you can actually see where every one of them is. We want fuse number 27, which is our fuel pump. And right there, the yellow one, is our fuel pump fuse. Now we're going to relocate that right over here beside this pink one. It'll go right there instead. It'll be this J case fuse instead of one of these little micro fuses. First thing we got to do though is take this off. Okay, so all you're going to need is a 10 millimeter and you can zip it right off. I'll just pull these right off, tuck them out of the way. Okay, so once you get those removed, you got four clips. You got one right here, one right there. And you're going to have two on the back. And there's a good shot of those. But before we do that, if you look at this main connector going across the front of the box, it kind of gets in our way. If you look down there, you can see that little white thing. That's like one of those Christmas tree tabs, and we need to pull that out. Okay, to remove these, you can just use a flat blade screwdriver, or you can get a tool like this. This makes it a lot easier to come out. These tend to fight you a lot with a screwdriver or pliers or anything else. But this little tool pretty much pulls them out perfect every time. There we go. Now we can remove this. So looking at this, you can see the bottom of that Christmas tree. So we just want to get in here. Pop it out just like that. Now this is free. There's the hole it went into right there. Once you lift up, don't let go. Go behind this other one. Just kind of pull away. Now as you can see, we have lifted off of the two front ones. So you want to be careful that way they don't go back on there and you want to do the same thing to the back side that's three as you can see this one popped back down on us so we want to go back in pull it back up there we go now we're free Okay, so now what we want to do is pry this top half off. These little bitty ones, they go all the way around. There, there. Back here, and all the way around back. You got to separate all those and not let them reconnect as you're pulling them up. So what you'll do is you'll take your flathead or pry tool. As you can see, it's separated. So that's what we want to do all the way around, but be careful not to let these go back in. So we've got it almost all the way undone on the back, but you want to keep pressure back there so it doesn't pop out. Okay, so now that we opened it, we're going to have to cut this tape off right here to give us a little bit more room. Okay, so in total you have one, two, three, four. I believe that one had one, maybe not, because it's right there. So five, and you have six 
seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, so what you wanna do, is there's gonna be tape on both sides. You just wanna cut that, don't cut the wire. I'll give the, these a lot more room to play. You want to do the same exact thing on this side. So just cut through it, peel it back, and give this all the room it needs. So now that you've done all that, you should be able to lift it up where you can see all these wires. And there's something to take note of right here. Give me one second. Okay, so looking in here, if we look, this first row of wires that go to the J-case fuses are a lot thicker. And then the ones behind it going to the mini fuses are a lot smaller, except for the one that goes to the fuel pump. So it's like Ford knew that they should have put this in one of the J-case fuses instead, and then chose not to. I don't know if that's the case, but I mean, to me it seems apparent. But we want that blue and red one right back there. And you can also count it, so it's going to be the second one from the, the bottom. So you got the red and yellow and then you have our blue and red that we need so here's the actual ford relocation kit so you can get those numbers screenshot if you need it and we're gonna go ahead and open it up and i'll show you what's inside okay so the first thing that comes with it is an instruction manual got pictures and everything you need to do should make it really easy but you're following this video so you won't need this you'll get two stickers one for your owner's manual and one for your fuse box that way you know where it's at and if anybody buys it after you they'll know you get two heat shrink tubing you get a already put together connector to just splice right into our blue and red and they give you a J case fuse. So everything you need to do this kit. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is reach in here and separate this wire from the others. So there we go. Okay, so if we look here, there it is right there. We pulled it out to here and you wanna double, triple, quadruple check this because you don't wanna cut the wrong wire. Also make sure it's separated enough where you don't snag another wire. So we're gonna cut it off about right there. Okay, so next what we gotta do is this one right here, we'll strip it back with some wire strippers. But before we do that, even though that should be fine the way it is, that's what the other heat shrink is for. So that way there's no chance that it would ever come in contact with bare metal, short something out or anything like that. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I got this cheap little little heat gun off of Amazon. I think it was like 30 bucks. And it's really handy with this because then you can isolate the wire. So we'll just take our heat shrink, push it up on there as far as we can. Try and keep these out of our way. So if you look there, we got a heat shrink. Just be careful not to burn the other wires. Okay, so we're almost done. With this blue and red wire, we'll have to strip it back and connect it to the provided wire that came with the kit. And that will go right up into there, right beside that red and white one. Okay, so I usually just use the auto stripping uh, wire strippers but we're going to use these and pick these up anywhere and they're real easy to use. Now then with the provided wire, we have this end right here. If you want to know this side that has the copper and everything, 
will be facing the front of the engine. So it'll go in there just like that. So you want to take it, put it in there just like that. Other side, they have it pre-stripped. We'll just pull that off. That's a little bit more wire than what I personally need. So I'm gonna cut it off just a little bit. Another thing is, is they give you this heat shrink and you don't have to worry about it right away because you can just take it and put it over after you've soldered. A lot of times you need to make sure you put that on before you solder, but in this case, we don't have to. So I'm just using this right here. Okay, so once you get that soldered, we're just going to put our heat shrink on. Just like that. Okay, so we'll just take our heat gun. Okay, so now that we got that, remember we want this side, the part that has the copper showing, to come towards us. So it's going to go up in there just like that. Just like that. Once again, you're going to stick it in right there beside the red and white wire. It's going to push right up in there. You also want to tuck this wire back in there, make sure not to damage any other wires. You'd hate to have to come back in here and do more work after all of that. So, now we'll just stick this right into there. It clicks right in. I'll tuck the wire in. Now, we'll look at the top. So if we come into the fuse box, now we can see where we added that little spade. Okay, so at this point, you got it whooped. All you gotta do is put it back together the way it came off, which is pretty simple. Just make sure that all of your wires are in. You don't wanna hurt any wires. And you just line it back up. So see here, I had a wire try to come through. Take your time, make sure none of that happens. In. Now check your back side. Make sure all of that's going in good. Okay, we have all of the main clips back in. Now we just got to get these four. Okay, so now we just need to get it back on these metal poles right here. So just line them up and slide them down. There we go. Perfect. Now we want this to go back in there. Now we're just going to put our cover back on. All it takes is those little push pins. So just line them up, push them in. Just like that. Okay, before we reconnect it, one thing we need to do is open up this box. We're going to put that sticker somewhere. I don't want to cover up our little chart, so I'm going to put it right here, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so if we look at it now, I'll put it right there. Fuse 70 fuel pump power relay, and we still have access to our little diagram. So if we go to our owner's manual, we'll see fuses and relays, and that is 328. So in this section, you can find out all about your fuses and relays. Now if we go to the next page, this is for the fuse box inside the engine bay. If we go over here, we'll see fuse 27, 20 amp, fuel pump relay power. So I'm gonna put it right there, but be careful when you put it here because since it is paper, as soon as you stick it, it will rip the pages. Okay, so as you can see, I stuck it right in there. So if we're looking through our fuses, trying to diagnose, we know that the fuel pump relay is now on fuse 70. Okay, so we just need to go ahead and hook these wires back up.
perfect. We want to go ahead and stick our new J-Case fuse in there. So all we got to do is take our new one right here. We'll just stick it right in there. And there you go. Also, one final precaution you can take is to go ahead and take the fuse out. That way, even if that wire did touch anything, it wouldn't go nowhere. Now all we need to do is hook our power wire back up. Okay, once that's back on there securely, just cover it right back up. Now the last thing we need to do to make sure that this Ford's Fuse 27 relocation kit worked and everything is good is to crank it up and make sure she runs. Okay, so moment of truth. Perfect. So we can call this one good. But that's going to do it for this video. If this video was helpful, please leave me a like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you.